In this two-part video, we'll solve the linear system of equations involving a truss. This video sets up the equations governing the truss we're given. The next video solves it in MATLAB. We have a triangle-like structure in static equilibrium, which has a pin at vertex 2 and a roller at vertex 3. If you don't know what that means, don't worry too much. Basically, a pin support like the one at vertex 2 creates both a vertical and a horizontal reaction force. If you tug this beam to the right, the pin will create a force pointing to the left of equal magnitude so that the vertex will stay in place. This is called a reaction force. If you push up or down on the joint, the pin will also create a vertical reaction force to counter the force you apply so once again the joint does not move. The horizontal and vertical reaction forces are labeled H2 and V2 respectively. Node 3 is a roller which can only create a vertical reaction force, V3. We externally apply a downwards 2000 newton force to node 1. When the load is applied, it's dispersed throughout the three truss members, F1, F2, and F3. Some of the load is also shouldered by the three reaction forces, H2, V2, and V3. The gist of the problem is to solve for these six forces. Before we jockey with any math or any equations, let's think about this problem holistically and draw the cause-effect diagram. The forcing function is quite intuitive. It's quite literally the external forces we apply. In this case, we only have one externally applied force, but we could have more in theory. The geometry of the truss dictates how the applied forces are distributed within the truss. For example, changing these angles will change how much force each member has to bear. Therefore, the system parameters include the angles spanning truss members and the assumed directions in which the forces are applied. When we analyze the truss, we have to assume that the forces act in a particular direction. That will impact which terms in the coefficient matrix are positive and negative. Finally, the responses are the six forces we want to find. Once again, we want to find the forces within each truss member, F1 through F3, and the three reaction forces, H2 to V3. We'll confirm the cause-effect diagram once we form the A, X, and B matrices. Unlike previous linear algebra problems, we aren't directly given the equations governing the system, so we have to derive them ourselves. To do so, we need to draw a free body diagram of each node. We're given the free body diagram of node 3. We can see that it includes the V3 reaction force and the two internal truss forces, F2 and F3. The free body diagram also includes two externally applied forces, P3X and P3Y. If we go back to the picture, node 3 doesn't have any externally applied forces, so the values of P3X and P3Y are zero. I included them on the free body diagram anyways because they're going to be important later. The truss is in static equilibrium, so we can assume the directions of all forces. I have no clue if F2 actually points to the left or not. For now, let's just assume that it points out of the joint. When we get our answer in MATLAB, the sign will tell us if we guess correctly. If our answer is positive, we guess the direction of the force correctly. If our answer is negative, the force acts in the opposite direction we assumed. The most important part when drawing the free body diagram is to stay consistent. We should use the coordinate system given to us here. Positive x points to the right, and positive y points up. We should also be consistent with the direction of our guesses. Let's assume that all the internal forces, F1 through F3, point out of each node. Because the truss is in equilibrium, the sum of the forces in both the vertical and the horizontal directions must be zero. If we balance the horizontal forces, we get minus F2 minus F3 cosine of 60 plus P3x equals zero. If we balance the vertical forces, we get V3 plus F3 sine 60 plus P3y equals zero. These constitute two of the equations we need. In total, we have three nodes, and each node has an x and a y force balance, so we'll end up with six equations and six unknowns. Let's continue writing the equations in a more organized document. Just as a warning, pay very close attention to your minus signs for the remainder of this video and the next one as well. I've taken the liberty of drawing the free body diagrams of the other nodes. Note that I'm staying consistent with my assumption that each internal force points out of the node. I can already tell from the node 1 free body diagram that this is actually an incorrect assumption. F1 and F3 should be pointing into the node to counter the downwards pointing applied force. Since we need to maintain consistency, let's leave it as it is. When we solve it in MATLAB, we should expect to get negative answers for F1 and F3, but we'll worry about that later. For now, let's write the force balances at this node. In the horizontal direction, we have F3 sine of 30 and P1x pointing to the right 
and F1 sine 60 pointing to the left. In the vertical direction, we have P1y pointing up, although the value of P1y is technically negative since the force is applied downwards. F1 cosine of 60 and F3 cosine of 60 both point in the negative y direction as well. For node 2, we have F1 and F2 pointing out of the node, the two reaction forces, and the two externally applied forces, which are technically both zero. Either V2 or F1 actually points in the opposite direction since the Y forces must sum to zero, but like I said, we can freely assume the directions without penalty because all the minus signs will eventually handle themselves once we're in MATLAB. Now we can proceed with the force balance. I've compiled the equations for each node on this slide. The top row of each collection is the horizontal force balance, and the bottom row is the vertical force balance. I ended up rearranging the terms such that all of the p's are positive and are on the right-hand side of the equations. This is a mathematically trivial but physically significant move. This results in us isolating the forces we want to find from the externally applied forces, which agrees with the cause-effect diagram. Now that we have all six equations, let's go ahead and assemble the A, X, and B matrices. I've already set the order of the X vector here, so the coefficients of the A matrix will be written with this order in mind. Pause the video here and compare your matrices to mine. It's possible that you could have swapped some rows or negated some rows. That's perfectly okay. Let's go back to the cause-effect diagram. We said the forcing function is the externally applied forces. This is represented in the B vector. The first element is the force applied to node 1 in the horizontal direction, which happens to be 0. The value of P1y will be negative 2000 because the force acts downwards, but we assumed it points upwards on the free body diagram. There are no other externally applied forces, so the remaining elements will also be zero. I hope you see why we added the px's and the py's to the free body diagram. Without them, we would just see a bunch of zeros and the sole negative 2000 newton force populating the b vector, and it would be difficult to tell that the zeros actually carry some physical significance. R, A, X, and B matrices agree with the cause-effect diagram. The b vector contains the externally applied forces, the A matrix contains the parameters representing the truss's geometry and the assumed directions of the forces from the free body diagram, and the X vector has the six unknowns that we want to solve for. As usual, the next step is to implement this in MATLAB. See you next time.